Hi friends, welcome to Morning Elms. Today we're going to talk about some of the records I picked up in November 2022. Hey everyone, Kyle here. So today is going to be a little bit different. If you're new here, thank you for watching. But usually I have a little more bells and whistles to my videos. I take some time and set up some proper audio recording. But today and all through the weekend, really, my neighbors upstairs have been moving. So there's a lot of different noises going on and I thought it wouldn't necessarily make sense to take all the time to set up the audio equipment, which does take a little bit of time to then maybe have to stop because of too much noise. So I'm experiencing a lull right now and I'm just gonna try to power through this. So thanks for sticking with me. So the first album I picked up is this Fote record with Carlos Nino. And this is off International Anthem, a label that I am loving and I just discovered this year and already has a lot of my favorite releases. So this came out in 2022 and it's a really fantastic listen. A lot of synths, some percussion, some saxophone, very textural. If you like a lot of modern, classical, ambient with a jazz flair, this will be totally up your alley. This release, very cool. I'm loving how International Anthem packages their, their vinyl releases. It always has the strip here, kind of giving a description of the record. This one particularly has a gatefold with some other notes inside that's really cool. And it looks like each, each musician has um, like a paragraph describing the record um, and how it came about. So just very cool stuff. And in thick vinyl, I think maybe 180 gram. I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the Bandcamp page. But very cool. Very cool release. This says an autumnal array of macro melodic reflections ripple and whir across a calm and colorful cascade of electric electro acoustic recall. So that's a pretty accurate description of this record. Very fantastic listen. I threw it on the other day during a rainy morning and it just fit the bill completely. So this is Fote with Carlos Nino and this is called An Offering. So on more of the pop side of things, I picked up Mariah Carey, MTV Unplugged. I talked about this in a previous video, my November vlog, which I can um, link up top there. But this is a really cool album. This is a 2020 reissue <clears throat> and it was sealed when I got it. But I bought this mainly because I've heard this version of Emotions and I, I absolutely adore it. There's just something about her vocal performance that's so powerful and she hits these crazy high notes. But there's also other really cool tracks on here that I'm just kind of learning about and getting into. If It's Over was a really cool track. And there's a, an awesome version of I'll Be There, which you're probably familiar from like the Jackson 5 and, and other artists covering it. But just incredible performance. Um, and you, I, I don't really hear about this when, you know, people talk about the top unplugged performances. You re usually hear about Nirvana, which is totally justified, and Alice in Chains. But this is a, a, a really great performance. An, another, just a quick aside, I always see snubbed when people talk about MTV pl plugged, Unplugged performances, I think because it didn't happen in the heyday, but Licky Lee's performance, maybe in, I don't know, I want to say maybe late 2000s or early 2010s is really great. It's, um, it came out around the time her second album came out, is it? youth novels i'm blanking on the title but very cool performance so check that out if you if you have the time the next album i got was by lake mary and it's called slow grass now this is a release from Chaz primic who is a member of the group fubitsushi which i talk about all the time if you've watched my videos so far you know i'm a, a fubitsushi fan and i love all the individual artists in that collective but Chaz um, brings like, he's a multi-instrumentalist, but brings more of the acoustic guitar flavor to that group and in his Lake Mary releases as well. And this is a really cool release. It's, it's two tracks 
kind of one long piece with um, two separate movements. Um, and it has Chaz playing some really restrained acoustic guitar over really nice field recordings. And although the guitar is restrained, it's very evocative, very powerful, very calm, very soothing. But there's other collaborations within this. So his Fubatsushi bandmate, Patrick Shirushi, is on here as well, incorporating some vocal elements and then his just absolutely phenomenal saxophone playing. And throughout the song there, the first track at least, let's let's talk about the first track, Patrick lends some, some light saxophone and those really soothing vocals to the mix. But toward the end of the track, they both get a little more chaotic where Chaz is kind of frantically strumming on the acoustic guitar. And then to complement that, um, Patrick is playing some really chaotic saxophone pieces as well. And it's just really cool how it climaxes um, at the end of the first track here. So beautiful, beautiful record. It came on, let me see here, some really cool green transparent vinyl. So loving this release. Again, I'm just continuing to love everything that the Fubatsushi folks do, That's Ma including Matthew Sage as well and Patrick um, and Chris as well. So just really cool. Uh, Chris is also featured on this album as well. Chris Jussel doing some, some string work. So just a, a very cool album, would recommend. This came out in 2022, will probably end up on my best of the year list. I've talked about this one quite a bit in a few of my other videos. It's in my um, November vlog, as well as my October video about what I'm listening to currently. This is Matthew Halsell's Color Yes, and it's um, a really nice jazz album. Very great for the aut autumnal season. Um, but also, you know, any time of the year, it's it's really wonderful. It was originally released in 2009, I believe, but Math, uh, Matthew wasn't super happy with how the mixing and mastering came out, so they re-released it in 2019. Um, just, just a very cool record. Matthew plays the trumpet, but there's also saxophone, harp, piano, bass, drums, very cool modern jazz. If you're interested in like, I don't know, my friend Andrew said it kind of sounded like Coltrane a little bit and, and I can agree like maybe something off of ballads. Very cool, but, but maybe a little less nocturnal and a little more, um, I don't know, a little sunnier, but very cool album. Now this is an album I'm not super familiar with, but I've seen it like just come up on my Instagram lately and I just wanted to check it out. I looked it up on Rate Your Music and it, it got some pretty good feedback. So this is Michael Hedges and this is Aerial Boundaries. And it's billed as a jazz album, kind of new agey too I've seen to describe this, but it's a lot of acoustic guitar. It, it's essentially just instrumental acoustic guitar work and a lot of like hammer-ons, a lot of finger picking, a lot of uh, harmonics, like Michael seems to like to tap harmonics on the um, acoustic guitar, but just very relaxing, very soothing album. It's kind of folky and pastoral, just a, a great album to to throw on in the background when you're doing something or, you know, even more focused if you want to throw it on in the forefront, there's plenty of interesting things going on, but very comfortable. It's it feels like a warm blanket and I'm looking forward to exploring this more and listening to it a lot more. So moving on to some CDs I picked up uh, in November. This is Japanese Breakfast and this is the soundtrack to the video game Sable. Now I'm not a huge gamer. I do play, you know, every now and then I'll play some some sports games or some more adventure games like Zelda or Mario and stuff like that. Um, but not a huge gamer. I just saw this come up somewhere. And and I know Japanese Breakfast had put out an album called Jubilee last year as well. Um, so this is from 2021. And 
Jubilee is more of an indie pop, indie rock release, which I liked. Um, very good album. So I'm going to be one of those ironic contrarians and be like, I like their more obscure album from 2021 than their major release. I'm just kidding, but I, I do prefer this. Um, this is an ambient album with a lot of electronic elements, but also some acoustic instrumentation as well. And it kind of, I, I've seen the label Folktronica attached to this, and I think that's pretty accurate. But just a, a gorgeous, gorgeous album. There's some vocal samples on it that are really unique. The electronic work is, is superb. And the um, there's some lead vocals as well. Very minimal lead vocals, though. Um, but she's got a wonderful voice, as, as we know. So this is cool. I watched a walkthrough of the video game on YouTube just to see what the game was like. And it, and it looks awesome. If I was more of a gamer, I would totally check this out. Unfortunately, I'm just like, have way too many hobbies that take up a lot of my time to like fully get into gaming. Um, yeah, I just can't, I can't afford another hobby. So <laughs> that's where I'm at with that. But looked, go the, the, the design of the game looked absolutely gorgeous and, and match the visual, the visuals match the tone of this record phenomenally. So I can imagine someone that, that played this game would, would the soundtrack would stick out. The sun's getting into my eyes, so I'm trying to, to kind of lean this way. Sorry about that. Um, but I picked up Makaya McCravens in these times on CD, and this is another album from International Anthem record label, which I, I said in the beginning I'm loving. Uh, Makaya McCraven is a jazz percussionist, but I, I've talked about this in my November vlog as well as the October What I'm Listening To video, so I'll, I'll put a card up. For one of those so you can get more of my thoughts but just briefly this is a very cool modern jazz album with a lot of different instrumentation involved um like i said in my previous video i i've really liked jeremiah chu and marta sophia honer's album from this year and marta sophia honer is featured on on this makaya mccravern record she plays uh viola so there's a lot of cool musicians featured on this record as well, including uh, Jeff Parker, who is a, a really great guitarist. So check this out. But there's also like trumpet, piano, vibraphone, alto sax, tenor sax, harp, and of course, drums from, from Micaiah. Um, but Micaiah also does a lot of sampling and other cool stuff. So just, just a, a very cool, very cool listen. So check this out, Micaiah McCraven. McCravern in these times. I think I said Makaya McCravern a lot, but it's Makaya McCravern. Sorry about that. And then lastly, I got a copy of Thin Lizzy's Jailbreak on CD. This came out in 1976 and has a lot of their well-known songs. Jailbreak, um, The Boys Are Back at Town. Just a, a really cool listen. I love uh, Romeo and the Lonely Girl. Some great songs on here, some just great hard rock with nice pop hooks and just packs a punch. I kind of maybe 10 years ago would have thought this wouldn't be my thing, but it's it's very cool, very great songs. And, and like just three to five minute or maybe three to four minute powerful rock songs that don't overstay their welcome, that just are, are memorable, fun, rocking. Everything you'd want from like a 70s rock record. So this is Thin Lizzy and this is Jailbreak. So thanks for hanging around. I appreciate it. Again, I'm sorry that this video won't have a lot of the a lot of the more advanced editing and audio um, quality that my other videos have had, but I'm new to YouTube, so I just really want to get content out there and start to build my followers. So thank you for watching. If you got anything cool on vinyl, on CD, on cassette, anything at all that's that, that really you're psyched about in October, November, December, whenever, let me know in the comments. And also consider following my Instagram page that's at Morning Albums. Um, and thanks for watching. I, I hope you have a, a great day and take care.